And I have client after client that will come in my office and say, I don't add salt to my food, and I totally believe them. But what they don't recognize is that flavor enhancers and preservatives are sodium-derived. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize every body 50, 60, 70, and above. Hi, everybody, and welcome to your second 50 years on the planet. I am Judy Terrell, and if you are joining me in this episode, then you are on my series number 12, and this is episode three in a series of six, and my topic is... What are foods that men and women both who are over 50 and definitely over 60, 70, and 80 and beyond can pay attention to and take in at a higher level in your everyday eating that will help you to have more energy um, every day of your life and as you continue to um, grow and age on the planet? Um, all right, so there you go. That's our topic for today is my number three uh, foods that will help with your energy. But I want to just start out by saying I have a big pet peeve. Whenever I see online, on social media, in, in information out for consumption, eat these top foods for more energy, for you know weight loss, for this, for that, the other thing, for to help cognitive functioning, um, I, my head wants to explode. Um, because I'm going to tell you right here in the beginning of this episode, I am not highlighting a specific food because I'm going to tell you from my observation, from my work with clients 50 plus over the last 40 years, every day, one on one in the trenches with people, there is nothing that you're, there's no one thing that you are going to take in that is going to reverse or change anything. This body is an incredibly miraculous, but complex interactive systems and you, you add one thing, it's going to create possibly an imbalance in other things. And so no one food is going to do anything for you, reverse anything, which is why in our simplistic reductionistic um, views of things, um, that's my pet peeve, reading these like top 10 foods. Um, and then I have people that are eating blueberries for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then throwing off the balance of other things and wondering why they're not feeling that great for instance. All right. So in this series of uh, six episodes, and this is episode number three, I'm, I'm saying what are foods you can eat that can help you with energy, but it's not a one food. It is, it is a group of foods that have certain element that if balanced in your body with other things can help you or will help you to have more energy. All right. So I hope I you know, kind of gave a little bit of an explanation as to my approach on this. So if you're looking for that one food, you know, just turn this off right now. But if you're looking to understand how to integrate foods with something that has that, that have a higher level of something and how that might help to balance systems in your body that can help you have more energy, then you want to stay tuned on this episode and follow all six of the ones that are in this series. All right. So that said, the foods that are high in potassium can help individuals in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond to have higher energy. And let me explain why. And then I will tell you what foods have high potassium. And then I'll put a little asterisk as to the people who might need to be careful and check with your doctor or pharmacist before you try to up the levels of the foods with the potassium. All right. So there's the rest of this uh, episode in a summary statement. So let's start off with potassium. Why would it, potassium be even anything that you might want to take in that might help with energy? So the, our entire nervous system runs on what is called the sodium potassium pump or the balance of sodium and potassium in our body. All right. So all our cells like to have a higher gradient of potassium inside the cell than there is outside the cell in the, you know, interstitial tissue. And in or and then outside the cell, our bodies like to have a higher level of sodium than what is inside the cell. All right. And we need both. We need sodium and we need potassium. And the interaction of these two minerals through the great the cell walls of the cells in our nervous system are responsible for our nervous system working correctly. 
And I mean, that includes innervating and the nerves, getting the messages from the brain to fire and function. And it includes the heart rhythm and the beat. Um, so the sodium potassium balance and the interaction between those two uh, minerals through all cell membranes, especially those in the nervous system, are responsible for you know our ability to be alive, to be functioning. Um, now, there's a certain ratio of sodium and potassium. And on a daily intake basis, we need 4,700 milligrams of potassium and we need about 1,500 milligrams of sodium, all right? In our typical American diet or 21st century diet, because if you're listening to this and you're outside of America, this applies to you too, because of a food manufacturing and the transport of it, we have a lot more sodium coming into our eating than we do potassium. Now, when we were you know, evolving as human beings, that wasn't the case. We got more potassium because many, many natural foods have potassium in them, some more than others, which I'm gonna tell you about you know, as we advance through this uh, episode. But you know, now in current um, food consumption, it's the direct opposite. And we are, you know, those of you who are listening, I'm sure many, the statistics show that many listening to me right now, if you're over 50, definitely 60 and 70, then you are probably, you have a higher predisposition for high blood pressure. And one of the main contributors to that is too much sodium. And I have client after client that will come in my office and say, I don't add salt to my food. And I totally believe them. But what they don't recognize is that flavor enhancers and preservatives are sodium derived. And so you might have no sodium in your eating that you're adding, but if you're using foods that you buy off the shelves, they are going to be high in sodium. And if you look at the ingredient level um, list, it may not be salt that you see. It's going to be sodium benzoate. It's going to be um, autolyzed yeast. It's going to be a variety of things that you will never recognize as sodium um, or salt, let's just say, um, but they are high in salt. So the point I'm making is that in everyday eating, unless you're really paying attention to it or eating nothing out of a box or, or pre-packaged, um, then you are higher in sodium than you are in potassium and on a daily intake level. And our body actually needs the opposite. We need to have more potassium than sodium on an ongoing um, intake level. I am so excited to announce your second 50.life. I have been working in the fitness industry with individuals, both men and women, over 50 years old for 42 years and really specialized in the last 10 on over 50. I'm over 50 myself by a long shot. And I've helped literally thousands of men and women both to lose the extra body fat that they gain in the second half of their life. Two, feel better in their own bodies energetically. Uh, I have helped people to reverse and eliminate health problems, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, pre-diabetes, um, symptoms of menopause, um, to name just a few. On this platform, you will have access to a entire body of resources, exercise videos, uh, mini courses, eating plans that are specially designed for over 50 men and women because there's special needs for our demographic. And in addition to the virtual resources that you'll have access to if you join at any time that you'd like, you also have access to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching through a, a group coach call every month. So you can bring your specifics and we can address those as you're also getting information that is specific to the over 50 population. 50s, 60s, 70s, and now 80s is the demographic that I'm working with. So it's your second 50.life, Y-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-N-D, 50.life. Go check it out. It might be the, the single best thing that you've looked at like in your second 50s, all right? And so because we are not getting that, by eating foods that have a higher level of potassium, you might then help to balance an imbalance that is causing energy def deficit, you know, fatigue, um, because your nervous system is striving to like, you know, it's working every day, your heart's beating every day, but it's struggling because it doesn't have the right balance of the minerals of sodium and potassium to keep that system, your nervous system, operating at optimal capacity. 
So, you know, I'm not a researcher and I'm not a scientist. And when, although I try to keep up with that information, you know, when it comes to food and eating and, and longevity and, and optimizing um, life for 50 plus men and women, both, um, you know, if I quoted you the information, the way it reads in the science journals, PubMed and things that I stay abreast of, um, it doesn't. It's not a selling point. My clients, I watch their eyes glaze over. Honestly, they don't care. But when you understand, I've watched clients in my room want to explain that sodium, potassium, you know, it's a, it's an electric impulse, like through your system, that's fueled by the balance of these two going in and outside of the cells. Um, then they understand a little bit more about how that would be involved with energy and why they might want to pay attention to getting a little more of the potassium. Again, because then they understand that they're not getting that because they're getting way more sodium, even if they're trying to control it. All right. So when it makes sense to a client, um, then there's more of a motivation and a higher adherence. And then they start to do it and they start to feel better. And so that is why I'm doing this series on what foods to increase energy when you're over 50, but explaining the mechanisms because it's not just a one food thing, right? All right, so now that you understand the sodium potassium, that we're eating too much sodium and not enough potassium, that that's involved with energy conduction because it's involved in the, in the functioning of your nervous system on a chemical level, what foods are actually higher in potassium? And when I ask a client that, the first answer I get is always bananas, all right? And yes, bananas have a good amount of potassium. There's about roughly 500 milligrams of potassium in a one banana. But I already just told you we need 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. So that would be nine bananas. And I'm telling you right now, even my best adherent clients are not eating nine bananas in a day, nor should they. That would be way too much sugar. And even though it's a good sugar, it's too much of it. So what are other foods? And I'm not saying not to have bananas because I am, but there are other foods that are actually higher in potassium that may be surprising to you, but let me tell you what they are. All right. So one of the highest potassium foods is beet greens. So everyone knows beets and then there's the greens on the top. Nobody's eating them, but you know, we buy beet, you buy beets and you cut them up. They come with the greens or you can buy the greens separate. What I'm telling you is that cut up the beet greens, mix them in with your iceberg lettuce or your romaine lettuce or your Boston leaf lettuce or whatever, Swiss chard, putting them into a stir fry. But the tops of the beets, those greens are about 1300 milligrams of potassium per cup. And so that is a good, good, good. That's like almost three bananas worth in a, in a smaller serving size. All right, so beet greens is one of the highest. Another one, interestingly, is white beans, okay? And beans, legumes, are good for so many reasons. You know, look at some of my other um, series on, you know, foods for longevity, foods for, you know, uh, enhanced health, but, you know, particularly white beans, which you can buy canned in a grocery store and uh, rinse them off to get the sodium off, and then throw them into a salad, put them into a stir fry, have them as a side dish with, you know, um, another part of a meal. Um, have them instead of hash browns or potatoes with um, eggs, um, scrambled eggs or egg whites in the morning. White beans are about a thousand milligrams of potassium per cup. Or I think I'm saying cup, I think it's half cup. Um, another really good source is, and I just mentioned potatoes, white potatoes, which if the skull and crossbones, if you look up glycemic index and they're a white food, but interestingly, glycemic index, which is one of the things that really is the thing that makes us want to mash, you know, and throw out bash uh, white potatoes. You don't eat white potatoes alone. You usually have it with a fat or you have it with, you know, a meal. And so the whole glycemic index and them busting up your blood sugar is debunked when you're eating it with something else. So don't be scared about white potatoes because white potatoes are about a thousand milligrams per four ounce potato of potassium. A couple other foods that are high in potassium are salmon, believe it or not. Um, high in omega-3s, high in potassium. They are high in calories relative to other white fish, but you know, if you're having the appropriate portion, they could be a good uh, source of potassium. 
and keep you in a in an optimal weight as you're aging. And then um, avocados, interestingly, are about a thousand milligrams per avocado. So there's a variety of foods there, many of which or most of which people like. And, you know, integrating those into your daily eating, one or two servings of those um, on a daily basis, plus there's potassium and other foods that are, but they're lower level. Um, white button mushrooms, another one, about 550 milligrams per um, half cup. So, you know, you're getting potassium from other foods too, but the ones I just told you about are the, tend to be the highest in potassium. All right. And now, so now we're working to bring foods in that have, they're naturally high in potassium. And I want to highlight something else. I am telling you in this series about foods that can help, you know, that have elements in them to increase energy, but I am not telling you to go out and buy a potassium supplement because now the potassium is taken out of its regular food. It's consolidated. And here's my little asterisk about medical conditions. There are many people watching this right now who are on high blood pressure medications, various medications for diabetes, various medications for heart disease. And if you are on any medication before you increase your potassium, you need to talk to either your doctor or your pharmacist to ask if the medication you're on, um, if adding more potassium, even though it's coming from a natural source, might be count contraindicated. All right. So double check if you're on medications for any of those three um, uh, disease states I just mentioned. If you're not on medications, then you're home free for eating the foods I'm talking about. However, again, I want to say I am not advocating go get a, a potassium supplement. All right. First of all, you can't get over 100 milligram potassium supplement because you can if you take too much potassium for the reasons I just talked about, about that sodium potassium pump, you can cause problems in your body. You, you can't eat too much potassium or you can, but like in order to do that, you'd have to be really, really like way off the farm by ingesting natural force sources of potassium. So if you're getting the potassium in the way I'm advocating in this episode, potentially there you're increasing it to get it back up to the level that your body likes to maintain. You're countering all the sodium and hopefully controlling for the amounts of sodium coming in. And now your nervous system can, has the right amounts and ratio of potassium to sodium, and you will notice that your energy increases. All right, so that is, this is episode number three, in what can you ingest natural foods that can help to increase energy over the long run um, as we age on the planet, and specifically for people who are over 50, but honestly over 60, 70, and 80. Um, and why do I say that like more so for the older population is just because, um, you know, as we get older, we don't absorb things as well through our digestive system because it's just older. We have less hydrochloric acid in our stomach. Uh, our, everything is just older. Telomeres are smaller. You know, we are just, you know, we've been replicating for 60, 70 years. And with everything, more and more replication, The it's just not as, even though it's the same replication at the end of the reproduction, the cellular reproduction that we are constantly doing in our bodies. Um, it's just not the same as when we're younger. So it's even more important for us older people, I'm 60, um, to make sure that we're getting the right ratios and we're getting it from like clean sources that are um, indigenous to what this vehicle is meant to be taking in. All right, everybody, this is episode number three out of a six part series on what can you eat on a daily basis that will, that has been known to help with energy. I'm explaining the mechanisms why, so you understand it. Um, if you got something, I'm hoping that you, you learned something from this that you didn't know before and more than just eat blueberries for like energy, <laughs> cause that, you know, I can't even, I've already explained why I can't even tolerate that. Um, but if you got something out of this episode, go back and watch the first two. There's three more coming. Um, and, and this is just one series. If you go to my platform, your second 50.life, I have, I think I'm up to 17 on that platform right now, plus all a bunch of other resources that you can access exercise videos, mini courses that are like 30 minutes to an hour on topics that are all related to over 50 and how to age 
well and optimally. Um, so please check that out. Go to my website. There's ways to work with me one-on-one -on -one there. I'm on social media. The outtake you're going to hear as soon as I'm done will tell you where to go for contact through those mediums. Um, as always, thank you for joining me. And I hope that I can help you to make your second 50 years on the planet even better than your first. That is my goal and agenda. I want friends on the planet in my age group to be with me. So I hope that's you. Be well, everybody, and I'll see you soon on the next episode. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you'd like to have access to more of my resources, then you can reach me at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You can go to my new platform at yoursecond50.life. That is Y-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-N-D 50.life or at my website, www.judyterrell.com at my website www.judyterrell.com